Cyberpunk aesthetics have taken over modern culture, and it's really easy to see why. In this video, I'm going to show you how to animate a Cyberpunk poster that will transport you straight into the heart of this captivating world. Hey everyone, my name is Cameron with Motion Science, and today I'm going to show you how to animate a Cyberpunk poster. So without any further ado, let's jump into After Effects and let's do this. So the first thing I want to do here for this Cyberpunk poster is I need to have a base image to start with. And what I've done is I've gone through the Midjourney application and I've created a cyberpunk woman. Now I typically will always create several versions of this. So I have multiple things to choose from. So I created this one. I like it a lot. This is a great one. Here's another good one. You know, we've got the really like the red and the black vibe and then we've got the blue and the black vibe. I've also got red and black again here. This one's super cool with the blue and the black and this one, which is also blue and black. So to begin, I'm gonna go ahead and move forward with this particular image. I've got the image here, it's just by itself. And then I've got some footage here. And if I turn this footage on, it's pretty basic, right? I'm gonna turn the opacity back up. So it's just some bokeh circles, basically like some blurred circles, just moving around, right? Like not very pretty, but what I can do is I can change this up and make something totally different. So. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this to a add mode. So now it's over the top of our footage, looking really nice. I'm also going to scale it way up to something like 250%, so we can see less of these circles. And I'm also gonna drop the opacity down to about 50%, so something like that. Now again, just looking at this initially, not super pretty, but we can make it a whole lot better by adding some effects. So the first effect I added was a levels effect here. And if I turn this on, it's just going to bring more of the gray values up so that we're seeing more of the circles in the composition. So this is with and this is without. You can see the difference here. Now, the next effect I'm gonna apply is a fast box blur set to a blur radius of 20. And you can see instantly, now it's becoming much more subtle, right? It's not over the top, in your face, look at these circles. It's something that's more atmospheric. And then I'm also going to apply a CC toner effect set to like a blue midtone. And that blue midtone is just to bring these yellow circles into the composition of the blue and the black of the original image. So if I turn this on, you can see here, this is what it looks like now. And it's starting to look a lot more interesting at this point, right? It's, there's some, some atmosphere that we've added, some overlay texture over the top of this. To make it look more interesting. Now in the next step, I've got the same elements, the back image, the shimmering circles over the top. And I've found this hypnotic shimmering gold particles that we see here. And if I just solo this by itself, you can see it's not, again, like how is this going to fit in with this composition? It's orange and black, these fire particles, and you know, just kind of questionable as to if it can fit into this composition, but I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do that. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to just change this to a screen mode and solo it. And now we've got some really interesting elements moving across her face. And you can see that they're moving in the direction that she's looking. She's looking over here and the particles are moving across the screen from right to left. And again, all I applied to this was a simple CC toner and I believe this was just the default. It's just this brown midtone. And turning that on, it removes a lot of that redness from the original footage. And it's just, it's already looking more visually interesting, right? She's looking right to left. There's some particles moving across her face. Really cool stuff. Okay, into the next composition. Now I've got this rain, that's these raindrops that are falling over some glass. We've got some traffic way off in the distance. I think it's traffic, but it's like maybe a telephoto lens. So the traffic, the headlights, the taillights are all really out of focus. It's creating some really nice bokeh. And we can use this again to add some texture, to add some atmosphere to the overall shot. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna unsolo this. I'm gonna set this to screen and I'm gonna drop the transparency down to 50%. And it's, you know, it's too overpowering at this point, right? There's too much going on. We've got these particles flying across her face. We've got these out of focus bokehs kind of moving around. So what we're gonna do next is we're going to actually hit S for scale. And we are going to take this to a negative 76 and a positive 76. And that's just a number I found that works. 
I did the first one negative 76 because what I did was I flopped it. So if I have 76 here, you can see I'm just taking it and I'm reversing it just like this, to negative 76, like so. And I'm also gonna hit P for position. And I found that I liked it kind of over here. So I'm moving it to the left. I'm also gonna bring it up like this. So anytime I'm using footage as an overlay here, I don't ever think that the whole piece has to be, you know, over the entire image. I just look for moments where it can just kind of sit. So like this one sits up here in the corner and you can see, so now it's created some nice visual interest up here in the top, over here on the left, and just adding some additional texture to the piece. So now we've got the blue bokehs over her face, we've got the shimmer moving across, and we've got these raindrops coming down, and we've got these nice out of focus lights here in the top and the left. So let's move on to the next composition here. And in this composition, we've got the same composition from the previous example. What I have though, is I have the word bar here, and it's just a simple neon 80s typeface that I chose for this and I made it vertical. And what I found was that I wanted to place it down here in the corner. So that's what it is. It's just, it's slightly rotated, negative eight degrees. And I just kind of brought it down here in the corner. And the reason I did this was because I'm using a plugin called Saber from Video Copilot. It's a free plugin. If you don't have it, go download it. And you can see here, here is the plugin. And I just went from default and I chose the, the neon preset. And then from that preset, I just did a few adjustments here to the intensity, spread bias and things like that. So if I turn on Saber and I turn off the type, you're gonna see what it's doing. It's referencing this type layer down here in the corner. And that's because I told it to reference the text layer for the core type and it's set to layer seven, which is bar two, the slightly rotated one right here, I could change this uh, from bar two to bar one, and you're gonna see it's right here in the middle, like the original example. We'll change it back to bar two, and it just kind of sits there. It's got a nice little flicker that I applied to it, an intensity of 20%, flicker speed of 15. And then I also just applied a camera lens blur from the effects and set the blur radius to 25, and I'll turn that on. By doing that, it kind of pushes that bar sign, I'm trying to make a bar sign here, in the background, right? So it looks like it's sitting back here, kind of in the background behind her. And let's go ahead and preview this so you can see what it looks like. And there's our preview. Now the flicker that's happening is very, very subtle here. And that's all I want. I don't want something that's over the top. I want something that's very subtle. The key is the subtleties in motion design. That's what takes our motion design to that next level. Now you might see this layer four here and wonder what that is. If I turn off my saber layer, all this is, is another bar sign that's sitting here in the foreground with a lens blur set to 19 right here. So if I turn that off, you can see that's what the sign looks like. And if I go into transform and I reset this, that's it. It's just a, a simple QuickTime animation that I downloaded off of a stock website. And I tried using something like this in the piece set to screen like we see here. So if I turn the camera lens blur back on, you can see it's just like a nice foreground element, but I ultimately decided that I didn't like that and I wanted to go for this bar here. So let's move on to the next composition. And for step six here, again, everything is the same. What I've added though, is I decided, this is a process of mine, is a lot of times I'll work with a certain image or piece of footage throughout the entire project. And as I get to the end stage, I decide, you know what? I'm just not feeling it. I'm gonna go back to one of my other references so when I went back to my original portraits here, I really was digging this particular image with her smoking. So in this example, I went ahead and just brought in that image and dropped it over the top of her. This is her. And then I dropped this over the top. And you can see I instantly fell in love with this because there's more breathing room. You can see that there's more breathing room here, up in here. If I turn this back off, Yes, this composition works, but it's a very crowded frame and I wanted more breathing room in my composition. So I went to her as the image, loved it. Then I added an adjustment layer over the top of this. If you don't know, an adjustment layer is just a, almost like an invisible layer that sits over the top of, of your footage and you can add effects to it if you want to. So the first effect I added was bad TV and this is by Robite. 
it creates like these these pixels, these glitches in here, and that's why it's called bad TV, right? It's uh, almost straight out of the box. I ju adjust just a few little settings in here, but you can see without, it's a very clean, almost digital image. And with, it brings this organic feel to the piece, right? And then the next thing I added was I added another effect from Sapphire. And Sapphire is my go-to set of plugins. If you can only have one set of plugins as a motion designer, Sapphire is the one to have across the board. And I added a film effect to this and you can see it just completely changed the look of this. Um, now I did play around with some different presets within the film effect. Those would be here. This one created a really dark contrasty. It was just too contrasty for me. Yes, I could go into the details and adjust it. And I also liked this one a lot, this kind of green and orange feel. But again, they were creating too much contrast in here that I didn't think it was worth me going in and really fine tuning it because I really was digging this preset. So this is what I've got. It, it's looking awesome at this point and it's got some really nice uh, motion happening within it. But we can take this one step further and that is by adding smoke to the cigarette. And what I did here was I took the original image and I took it into Photoshop and I painted out the smoke that was already there in this image. So I zoomed in and I actually used AI and I did a lasso tool and I drew around the smoke and I told it to remove that smoke and it did a pretty good job. And so I saved that image as this, right? So now that there's no smoke, it's just a cigarette there, no smoke. So before and after. What I can do now is add some actual smoke to it. So I pulled some stock footage of smoke moving up in the air. I'll turn that on and you can see, here's what that looks like. And I positioned it where I needed it to be positioned. You can see the smoke is coming from here and I positioned it with that being the tip of the cigarette. And I set it to screen as well, and I also scaled it down to 24%. So that is it. So let's go ahead and preview the whole piece and take a look. And there we go. There is our animated cyberpunk poster. Now you can really see the flicker happening here with the bar, the color correction we added with Sapphire, the particles moving across the top of her. There's these subtle blue blobs kind of floating around, the raindrops, the bokeh, really cool stuff. I could always, you know, take this in a different direction too. I could bring in like the image we saw here. I could turn off the saber image here. I could drop her image down just a little bit so it's sitting nicely in the frame like so. And then I could also bring in that bar sign we saw previously. And again, I could render this out and it's gonna look just as cool. Yeah, and you can see here, like this works just as well, right? It's a nice, powerful cyberpunk image. Got a flickering sign over the front of her. The most important thing here is that you start with a really solid base. If you enjoy content just like this, I highly encourage you to check out my program called the School of Cinematic Motion Design over at motionscience.tv. We cover a lot of other masterclasses. There's a lot of content and training in the community. So definitely check it out if you're interested. Thanks for watching today, and I will see you in the next video.